This is the 38th video in our series, looking at how to complete a basic setup and configuration of a Synology Network Attached Storage Device, or as they're more commonly referred to, a NAS. In this video, we're going to take a look at how we configure the VPN client built into Windows 10 so that we can connect it to the VPN server that we've already installed onto our Synology NAS. Before we start, we need to point out that because we configured our VPN server to use L2TP IPsec, by default the VPN client built into Windows 10 will not be able to connect to our VPN server. When Microsoft introduced Windows 10, it configured Windows so that it would be unable to connect to a VPN server running L2TP IPsec if that server was behind a NAT firewall. For those that may not be aware, NAT, or Network Address Translation, is a way that our router can use a single public IP address to connect multiple devices to the internet. However, due to the way that NAT works, it will also automatically create a firewall that will protect any devices connected to our router. So, in order for an operating system to get L2TP IPsec VPN traffic through a NAT firewall, the operating system will need to use something called NAT-T, or Network Address Translation Traversal. The problem with Windows 10 is that Microsoft controversially decided that NAT-T should no longer be enabled by default. So in order for the VPN client in Windows 10 to work correctly, we are going to need to make a change to the registry on our computer so that we re-enable NAT-T. If from the Windows desktop we locate and select Search, from within the Search field, we now need to type RegEdit. The search results will then display a desktop application called Registry Editor. When we select Registry Editor, the following window will be displayed. You can see that the Registry Editor window is divided into two parts. On the left side, we have a navigation bar that displays our registry and its hierarchical structure. Then on the right side of this window, we have any registry entries relating to whichever directory that we've selected in the navigation bar. Let's get started by navigating to the location where we will need to make changes to our registry. First, we need to select and expand the directory called hkeylocalmachine. From within hkeylocalmachine, we now need to select the system directory. Next, from within system, we need to locate and select current control set. From within current control set, we now need to select services. Finally, within services, we need to locate and select policy agent. On the right hand side of our registry editor window, we can see all of the entries for policy agent. We now need to add a D word value to this directory. If from the menu bar we select Edit, and then from the menu Highlight New, a submenu will open. Now from within the submenu, we need to select the option DWORD 32-bit value. Next, we need to give this value the title Assume UDP Encapsulation Context on Send Rule. However, this must be all one word. When we press enter on the keyboard, our DWORD value will be set. If we now right click on our DWORD value, a quick menu will appear. From within the quick menu, we need to choose modify to open an edit window. Now in the value data field, we need to enter the value 2. When we select OK, our DWORD value is updated. We can now close Registry Editor and reboot our computer so that the changes to our registry can take effect. With Windows now rebooted, we can take a look at configuring the VPN client built into Windows. First, we will need to find VPN settings. So, once again from our desktop, if we locate and select Search, 
and then from within the search bar type VPN. In the search results under best match, we will see VPN settings. If we select VPN settings, we are presented with the VPN panel. Let's start by selecting add a VPN connection. Now if we select the VPN provider field, we're presented with an option called Windows built-in. We need to make sure that we've selected this option before we look at the connection name field. Now in the connection name field, we simply need to give our VPN connection a title that will make it easier to identify. In the server name or address field, we can either enter the static IP address of our home broadband connection or our domain name. If like us you do not own a static public IP address, but have configured your Synology NAS to use DDNS, you will only be able to use the domain name that was assigned to you by your DDNS service. When we select the VPN type field, we are presented with a drop down menu listing a number of different connection types. The option that we need to select from this menu is L2TP IPsec with pre-shared key. If you remember back to when we set up our VPN server, we had to set a pre-shared key that would be used in conjunction with a username and password. So in the pre-shared key field, we now need to enter the same password as the one that we used in the pre-shared field on our VPN server. When we select the input field called Type of Sign-in Info, we are presented with a drop-down menu. The option that we need to choose is Username and Password. While both the username and password fields are optional, if we choose not to fill in these fields, when we first try and connect to our VPN server, the Windows 10 client will prompt us for a username and password for someone who is authorised to access our VPN server. When we select save, we are returned to the VPN panel where our VPN connection will now be listed. If we select our VPN connection, we are presented with three options, connect, advanced options, and remove. Let's take a quick look at advanced options. Within the advanced options panel, we are presented with some basic information about our VPN connection. If we select the Edit button, we can change the settings to our VPN connection. As Windows 10 will remember the username and password that we use to connect to our VPN server, the Clear Sign-in Info button simply removes the saved credentials that we previously used to sign on to our VPN server. Finally, we have VPN proxy settings, which, as we are not using a proxy server, we will not need to edit. Let's close the VPN panel as we're now ready to try and connect to our VPN server. In order to test our VPN server, we're first going to need to tether our computer to our mobile phone. This is to ensure that when we connect to our VPN server, our computer is connected directly via the internet and not locally through our home network. With our computer now tethered to our mobile phone, let's start by opening our web browser and confirming that we're connected to the internet. With our web browser now open, if we run a Google search for the term, what is my IP address? The search results should display the public IP address that our mobile phone is currently using to connect to the internet. So with our computer now connected to the internet, Let's try and establish a VPN connection. If we once again select show hidden icons from the system tray and then select the internet access icon, at the top of the menu, we have the VPN connection that we've just created. If we select our VPN connection, we're presented with a connect button. By selecting the connect button, we're prompted to enter a username and password for someone who is authorised to access the VPN server on our NAS. When we select OK, the user credentials will be saved to our computer so that we will no longer be prompted to enter a username and password when we try and connect to our VPN server. After a short delay, 
we're connected to the VPN server on our NAS. If we once again open our web browser and refresh this page, you can see that the public IP address has changed to display the IP address being used by our home broadband connection. This signifies that our computer is passing its internet traffic through our VPN server and out to the internet via our home broadband connection, rather than directly from our mobile phone. Let's now check to see if we can access the network shares on our Synology NAS. Once again from the Windows desktop, if we select Windows File Explorer, when File Explorer opens, if from the sidebar we select Network, we will find that Windows is unable to map our home network. Instead, in order to access a network share on our NAS, we're going to need to use the address bar. If in the address bar, we type backslash backslash then the IP address of our NAS, when we press enter on the keyboard, our network shares will be displayed. As we previously installed and configured DNS server onto our Synology NAS, we can also access our network shares by using the domain name that we assigned to our NAS. However, as we cannot clearly see that we've connected to our network shares by using a domain name rather than an IP address, if we select network from the sidebar and then in the address bar we type backslash backslash and the domain name for our NAS, when we press enter on the keyboard, while we are prompted to enter the credentials for a user allowed to access our network shares, after entering those credentials, we can access our network shares via the domain name that we assigned to our NAS. Having now confirmed that our VPN connection is working, in that we can both access the internet and our network shares, let's disconnect from the VPN server. To disconnect from our VPN connection, we once again need to select Show Hidden Icons. Now if we select Internet Access, and then highlight our VPN connection, we are presented with a Disconnect button. If we now select Disconnect, Windows will disconnect us from our VPN server. So to summarize, in this video, we looked at how we configured the VPN client built into Windows 10. However, in order to do this, we first needed to edit the registry so that Windows 10 will work when behind a NAT firewall. We then configured our Windows 10 VPN client so that it can connect to the VPN server on our Synology NAS. Finally, we tested our VPN connection by checking that we can still access the internet and our network shares. In the next video in this series, we're going to take a look at how we add two-step verification to our administrator's account.